ఇంటర్మీడియట్ విద్యా రంగంలో అగ్రగామి మన ఎన్ఎస్ఆర్ ఇంపల్స్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఐఐటి జేఏఐనా తెలుగులేని విద్యా సంస్థ ఎన్ఎస్ఆర్ ఇంపల్స్ ఎస్ సో వాట్ వీఆర్ డిస్కసింగ్ హియో వీఆర్ మేకింగ్ అవుట్ ద క్లియర్ డిఫరెన్సెస్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద మేజర్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ డిఫరెన్సెస్ హియో మోర్ కెరోటిన్స్ మోర్ జాంతోఫిల్స్ ratio again i'm repeating this because this concept is very very important and i kept star marks very clearly every point you will get it as in the form of a question so here ratio between chlorophyll a by b means 25 is to 1 here it is 5 is to 1 right here ratio between a by chlorophyll carotenes is 1 is to 4 and here it is 1 is to 1 and here it obtains ps1 gets electrons from ps2 try to remember here ps2 will get electrons from water this question you have to choose these options provided in the question if it is mentioned as non cyclic electron transport system then only you can take that answer otherwise don't take that okay so no splitting of water but you know there is a splitting of water and not only this differences we have continuation of some more differences so let us continue that sorry guys let's continue for the excuse me so here we need to continue with these points what is that point it obtains electrons from ps2 it obtains electrons from water it is taking electrons from ps2 then it gives electrons to whom it gives electrons to whom okay it is taking electrons from where means ps2 right in non cyclic what is happening here ps2 is there ps2 is here one second guys sorry yeah from ps2 to electrons are moving to ps2 from there electrons are coming to ps1 so the movement is happening from where to where from ps2 to ps1 so what is the thing here ps1 obtains electrons to from ps2 it is taking electrons from ps2 then it gives electrons to whom that is the next point right so here we can see it passes its electron passes electron to to whom it passes its electron it passes its electron to nadp to convert into nadph sometimes nadp was not there in the option then you have to take it passes its electron to ferridoxine so very 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 important i hope you got it very clearly here ps1 it obtains means it means who here ps1 ps1 takes electrons from ps2 so ps2 from ps1 is taking electrons from ps2 then it passes to electron to whom either you can take ferridoxine in the options if ferridoxine is not there then you have to choose the option as nadp so ps1 obtains electrons from ps2 and passes its electrons to ferridoxine look at this point very 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 important most of the students they'll get confusion here because between non cyclic and cyclic and between ps1 and ps2 okay so they will say that okay ps1 it's uh, passing its electrons means they will write ps2 no and in the question if it is mentioned non cyclic then only you have to choose this option okay guys again i repeat it obtains its electrons from ps2 that means ps1 is taking electron from ps2 it obtains from ps2 but it passes its electron it passes its electron to whom either you can write ferridoxine or nadph2 nadp is getting converted into what nadph2 right similarly coming to ps2 what do we say ps2 ps2 it obtain electron from where water so here you know it very well from water electrons are coming to ps2 from water electrons are coming to water then ps2 is passing its electron to whom definitely what is answer ps1 see 
guys most of the people have a confusion here that's why I repeated this now answer this question so for whenever a question comes that PS2 passes it passes its electron to whom it passes it passes its electron to PS1 very very important here it passes its electron to pyridoxine or NADP plus I hope you got very clear differences between this point and this point in this case this point and this point I hope you got the clear difference right again I say PS1 obtains its electrons from PS2 so PS1 is taking the electron from PS2 and then passes to electron to ferredoxin or NADPH2 very 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 important it is taking PS1 taking electron from PS2 giving to ferredoxin or NADP similarly and if the question is about PS1 or not you need to check carefully in the question if the same question is about PS2 then PS2 obtains its electrons from where? PS2 takes the electron from water and gives its electron to PS1. It will give its electron to PS1. These two questions are very, very important. Very, very important. Right? Now, let us continue for the So here there is no, here splitting of water is there, here no splitting of water. What you can see here, here no oxygen evolving complex or no uh, oxygen production is absent or you can say no oxygen release, yes or no. So but here there is oxygen evolving complex or oxygen is produced or released as an end product as an end product very very important why because sometimes you will get a question that where this oxygen evolving complex is happening in where it is happening where oxygen is released as an end product sometimes even that you will get it as in the form of question where this will happen this happens remember very very important this happens in the lumen of thylakoid where this happens lumen of thylakoid lumen of thylakoid what is released here oxygen is released I told you to remember one more very important point regarding lumen of thylakoid what is that it act as a proton reservoir it act as a proton reservoir very 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 important so lumen has two or three important things what it will do one is here by splitting of water it will store so many protons so lumen of thylakoid act as a proton reservoir this point is very 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 important for the next concept to understand because total concept coming concept totally speaks about lumen of thylakoid totally speaks about protons Okay, so proton reservoir means remember lumen of thylakoid. In the lumen of thylakoid what happens is nothing but I am talking about lumen of thylakoid. In the lumen of thylakoid there is a photolysis of water. Sometimes these are the major questions. I am writing here these are the major questions. Mostly these questions will come the questions. What are the questions? We have so many questions here. Look at here. So whenever the question is in non-cyclic electron transport system, it should be mentioned in the question non-cyclic electron transport system. In non-cyclic electron transport system, where which is the site of photolysis of water, right? That is lumen of thylakoid. It's not there. Then you have to choose the option as chloroplast. The next question is which act as a proton reservoir? That is again lumen of thylakoid. If the question is where the oxygen released as an end product of photosynthesis that again the option you have to choose is nothing but lumen of thylakoid right. So here no oxygen evolving complex and no oxygen is released but this oxygen release happens only in non cyclic electron transport system. So this happens in a non cyclic electron transport system or itself is called Z scheme but will not happen in case of this happens in case of cyclic. 
that means what is happening here very clearly ps1 participates very very important thing ma here very very important thing i'm writing ps1 participates in or involved in ps1 first of all where ps1 is located let us let us write located ps1 is located in stroma oppressed thylakoid very very important stroma oppressed thylakoid don't write thylakoid again you will get lot of confusion remember stroma oppressed thylakoid and meaning is actually most of the people they get confusion here so they will write thylakoid they will remember they'll forget stroma no so when you take the chloroplast i'll better explain this I'll better explain this oppressed region you have to remember this is very very important very very important guys whenever where ps1 is located whenever you get the question where ps1 is located means try to remember on the stroma stroma oppressed thylakoid what is the meaning of oppressed region of thylakoid what is the meaning of this so if you take the chloroplast so again i'll tell you this so you have what are called these all are called thylakoids these all are called thylakoids now the down proteinaceous part what you find in this totally this is called stroma okay and here below this thylakoid the base of the thylakoid it is not exposed to the outer side and that is itself is called as oppressed thylakoid it is called oppressed thylakoid oppressed region of thylakoid oppressed region of thylakoid very very important oppressed region of thylakoid better i'll write both oppressed region and non oppressed region aside i'll tell you after this better because here in this small space i can't write everything let us let us complete the differences i'll come back to that point remember ps1 is located in the stroma oppressed thylakoid thylakoid base which is not exposed to to outer side and which is attached to stroma that is a place where ps1 is located coming to this here ps2 ps2 is located i'm talking about ps2 here make very clear differences so in this case we can write ps2 so here we can write ps2 is located in a granum thylakoid it's located in a granum thylakoid very 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 important very very important very important this points okay i told you know this so each and every point what we are discussing here as a differences are very very important that is why i'm keep repeating each and every point what we are making out this because the total story of photosynthesis what you understood about non cyclic what you understood about cyclic everything will be cleared in terms of differences when you know these differences very clearly that is means you have understood that both uh, cyclic and non cyclic electron transport system of photosynthesis is a very very important concept right so where this point is very very important where ps1 is located ps1 is located in stroma oppressed thylakoid i'll let you know what is oppressed and non oppressed okay whereas ps2 is located in a granum thylakoid now apart from this let us make other very important point ps1 participates in participates in or involved in involved in both uh, what you call cyclic and non cyclic electron transport system very very important which participates in both cyclic and non cyclic here so ps1 is there you find in case of cyclic ps1 you find in case of cyclic 
as well as in non cyclic ps1 participates in both cyclic electron transport system as well as non cyclic electron transport system very very important whereas coming to this here we can say that this point is also very very important ps2 participates or involved involves only in non cyclic electron transport system okay why because here ps2 does not participate in does not involve in cyclic very very important okay so coming to this ps2 involves only in non cyclic only in non cyclic it's very very important only in non cyclic because ps2 does not participate in p cyclic electron transport system so uh, you may have chance of getting question which photo system participates in both cyclic as well as non cyclic then you have to take ps1 or p700 which one participates only in non cyclic but not in cyclic then you have to take ps2 or you can take p680 right that is a question see every point you have chance of getting a good number of questions so make sure that you strike and try to stress each and every point try to remember in your mind which photo system is located in granum thylakoid means ps2 will come which photo system is located in stoma oppressed thylakoid means ps1 which photo system is associated with photolysis of water and oxygen evolving complex then that is uh, ps2 and not associated with oxygen release and not associated with oec no nadph production uh, yeah yeah nadph to production is there ps1 but no oxygen and no oxygen no photolysis of water for ps1 they are only associated to ps2 where the oxygen is released as end product if that question comes very very important that in ps2 it is associated with ps2 where lumen of thylakoid where h plus act as a proton reservoir lumen act as a proton reservoir and that is a place where even photolysis of water takes place and here in the lumen oxygen is released as an end product right so here let us quickly revise and again i'll tell you they are very 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 important okay i'll quickly revise it again ps1 passes its electron to ferredoxin if this is not there in the option nadp whereas ps2 passes its electron to ps1 right and here no oxygen evolving co uh, complex no end product called oxygen is related but both happens in ps2 Uh, association with ps2 and remember they happen in the lumen of thylakoid that is a source for proton reservoir that is a place where photolysis of water occurs that is a place where even the end product of oxygen is released out next where ps1 is located it's located in stoma oppressed thylakoid where ps2 is located it's located in the granum thylakoid now ps1 participates in both cyclic and non cyclic but ps2 participates only in non cyclic but not in cyclic electron transport system very very important points let us continue for the so if you take the chloroplast here one second if you take the chloroplast now now within this chloroplast we have two regions which are the two regions which we find in the chloroplast one it is called as chloroplast contains two regions 
which are the two regions we say thylakoid thylakoid has two regions chloroplast thylakoid but you write down chloroplast thylakoid contains two regions which are the two regions we say thylakoid oppressed region and other one we call thylakoid non oppressed region non oppressed region okay so we have two regions in the thylakoid what are they thylakoid oppressed region other one is called thylakoid non oppressed region so what is that if you look at now if you take this is a chloroplast when you look at the chloroplast here we can see number of thylakoids present together they are being connected with thylakoids thylakoid granum we already have studied right so what i have drawn is nothing but chloroplast now here you all know it very well these are thylakoids when group of thylakoids piles of thylakoids join together they form what is called as granum right now here the proteinaceous fluid what you find this is called stroma now when you look at here the upper surface of thylakoid outermost upper surface of the thylakoid which is not in come in contact with stroma not associated with stroma itself is called as a non oppressed region itself is called what a non oppressed region okay so what do you call this this you call this is called a non oppressed region what is non oppressed region here the outer surface of thylakoid which is not associated with which is not associated with stroma excuse me one second sorry guys excuse me let us continue this is i think new marker sir let's see it's okay this is i think this is a uh, visible so, yeah thank you sir yeah i hope this is very clearly you can see right two regions are there i'll say loudly if it is light also thylakoid oppressed region oppressed region we call okay thylakoid oppressed region so these are thylakoids are there they are present one above the other this is called oppressed region one second guys sorry so here this is oppressed region and i this is i'll uh, read again thylakoid non oppressed region non oppressed region we say now where they are located let us see very clearly this is the outer surface upper surface stroma is down outer surface of thylakoid this is what is nothing but what thylakoid outer surface of thylakoid which is not associated with stroma it is not in come in contact with stroma then this upper surface it's called as what if it is not clear i'm writing again here non oppressed region what do you call this non oppressed region means not in come in contact with stroma right there are so many thylakoids are placed one above the other so you can see here there are so many thylakoids are placed one above the other now the the thylakoid on which the surface of thylakoid not in come in contact with the stroma it got exposed to the outer side that region it's called as what a non oppressed region try to remember then what is oppressed region here now see the down thylakoid this is down thylakoid right and this low surface of this thylakoid it is in contact with the stroma the lower surface of the thylakoid this is in contact with the stroma this is what is called as oppressed region this is what is called as oppressed region how do you define oppressed region 
the surface of thylakoid the surface of thylakoid which is associated with which is associated with the stroma is called uppermost region so this is in contact with the stroma lower surface has been in contact with the stroma and it is called uppermost region so all together when you take we have the thylakoid has two regions okay the thylakoid has two regions what are they thylakoid uppermost region meaning it is not exposed or where it is there the all thylakoids are arranged for files of coins of arrangement the lower thylakoid has a lower surface which is connected to stroma this is a place where ps1 is present this is a place where ps1 is present this is associated with stroma what do you call that region uppermost region you can write completely thylakoid uppermost region i repeat again definition the surface of thylakoid which is associated with stroma the lower surface which is come in contact with the stroma this is the place where ps1 is present that is called as what thylakoid uppermost region then what is non uppermost region outer surface of the thylakoid which is exposed to the outer side not in contact with the stroma meaning not associated with stroma it's called as non uppermost region i know guys little uh, slight confusing here thylakoid lower surface thylakoid upper surface we are speaking with i'll give you clarity just a minute so sorry yeah let us take this these uh, you know these pages let us take it as thylakoids okay so what you can see in this case is all thylakoids are arranged one above the other so the piles of groups of coins of arrangement now these all pages you imagine these all are thylakoids how thylakoids are arranged one above the other like a piles of coins this total one is granum so this all are nothing but thylakoids this all papers are nothing but thylakoids right now thylakoids granum this is outer surface this is upper surface this is exposed to the sunlight this is exposed to the sunlight this is outer surface outer surface of the thylakoid my hand you take this is stroma this is stroma so on my on the stroma this is stroma my hand is stroma on which thylakoids are placed these are thylakoids one above the other this is called granum thylakoids now this is outer surface of the outer thylakoid outer surface of the outer thylakoid or uh, this is on to which the light it will get exposed what is present here here what is present is nothing but ps2 here what is present here ps2 is present what is present here ps2 is present that's why previously when we have written the differences previously we wrote ps2 is located on the granum thylakoid meaning outer surface of the thylakoid this is outer surface of the thylakoid and this outer surface not in come in contact with stroma stroma is somewhere down this outer surface is not associated with the stroma so what do you call this this is called as a non uppermost region outer surface of the thylakoid what you can see this side this is called non uppermost region who is present here ps2 is present right similarly when comes to down part so this all are thylakoids this full page is a thylakoid this full page is a thylakoid come to the last thylakoid last page last thylakoid the last thylakoid has the lower surface but this lower surface it is in contact with stroma okay the lower surface what you can see here the lower surface this part this is the last thylakoid okay this total page you imagine thylakoid the thylakoid has a lower surface this lower surface is in contact with my hand is stroma this is in contact with stroma not exposed to sunlight this is called as what this is called uppermost region this is called as one uppermost region who is present here 
in this we find what is called ps1 is present very 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 important what is important upper surface this is called non appressed region this is not in contact with stroma because on stroma so many thylakoids are placed one above the other so this upper surface what you can see physics cover here right physics outermost page this upper surface right and this is a lumen empty space is lumen this is thylakoid this upper thylakoid not in contact with stroma stroma is somewhere down so this is called as non appressed region why am i repeating so many times even though i tell 10 times most of the students they confused with appressed region and non appressed region after saying so much they'll say that outer part is appressed no ma'am down part is non appressed when i ask why means down part is not visible so this is non appressed upper part is visible this they'll call appressed no okay so you have to make it very clear in your mind outer surface not in contact with stroma exposed to light this is called as non appressed region thylakoid non appressed region who is present means ps2 and surrounding what is present here stroma stroma is having what ps1 so cycle moves from ps2 to ps1 this is non appressed region what is appressed region uh, these all are thylakoids last layer lower thylakoid last thylakoid this lower surface which is not visible to sunlight not 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 having this to the upper side and this is in contact with what this is in contact with stroma my hand is stroma this place is called as what appressed region now i hope i think it's very clear between what we say appressed region and non appressed region right i hope this part is very clear where ps2 is located ps1 is located very 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 important let's continue for the so when you take why am i telling this suppressed region non appressed region because total story of photosynthesis held within this now what was the last point we studied here we say that uh, now what is associated with the photosystem 2 what is associated with photosystem 2 so here light falls on to this what happens splitting of water it releases protons yes or no so protons accumulates where in the lumen of thylakoid what are the points we discussed where oxygen is released oxygen is released in the lumen of thylakoid so in the lumen of thylakoid what you find protons are there now these protons are involved in what they convert they these protons they convert adp to atp yes or no they convert in the lumen what are get accumulated here protons are accumulated in lumen what are accumulated protons are accumulated from where they are coming from splitting of water these protons accumulate in the lumen of thylakoid using this protons adp plus inorganic phosphorus gets converted into atp this is what is our next concept that is photophosphorylation what is this here this is light light is used light is used for splitting of water that is uh, occurs with the ps2 ps2 is associated with splitting of water protons are released oxygen is released out everything takes place in lumen of thylakoid that's why lumen of thylakoid is called proton reservoir and these all protons what we say three protons contributes for synthesis of one atp how many protons three protons taking three three protons out it will synthesize one atp the synthesis of atp itself is called photophosphorylation okay so what is this photophosphorylation that's meaning here is using light photo using light phosphorylation meaning synthesis of atp what is phosphorylation meaning 
synthesis of ATP using light. Finally, there is a synthesis of ATP. This is called photophosphorylation. This is what is the next concept. We have to continue with photophosphorylation. Where the photophosphorylation happens in the lumen of thylakoid. Lumen of thylakoids, what you find? Protons. 3-3 three, three protons comes out. Using 3 protons, ADP gets converted into a ATP. How why? First to taking one proton, one phosphorus AMP, adenosine monophosphate, second to proton adenosine diphosphate, third proton adenosine triphosphate ATP. Synthesis of ATP using light, where happens in the chloroplast, in the chloroplast where it happens, lumen of thylakoid. Now the question arises, how absorption of light in the lumen of thylakoids using protons, how synthesis of ATP takes place? That concept itself is called photophosphorylation. Let us continue our discussion with photophosphorylation. Tell me again, what is photophosphorylation? Absorption of light and in non-cyclic associated with PS2 the splitting of water, protons are released in the lumen of thylakoid and these protons contribute for conversion of ADP into ATP. Synthesis of ATP by using light it is called photophosphorylation, very 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 important. Now let us continue with that concept. So. What is the next concept we have to start? Photophosphorylation. Right. Photophosphorylation was first proposed by, first given by the scientist Daniel Arnon. Who is a scientist? Very, very important concept. What is that? Photophosphorylation. The concept of photophosphorylation for the first time proposed by the scientist Daniel Arnon. Now, this is based on, uh, this is based on uh, Michels or this Michels chemi-osmotic hypothesis, chemi-osmotic hypothesis. This is purely based upon the concept called as what? Michel's chemi-osmotic hypothesis. Now total photophosphorylation or anything we re related to what we call ATP synthesis. ATP synthesis now is purely uh, given by a uh, concept called Michel's chemi-osmotic hypothesis. Now, the Michel's chemi-osmotic hypothesis was given by scientist a Peter Michel's. Peter Michel is a scientist who has given the concept called Michel's chemi-osmotic hypothesis. That means, Peter Michel is a scientist. Uh, he studied about chemi-osmotic means osmotic potential by osmosis uh, which is happening in the chloroplast, which is happening in the mitochondria, how they generate ATP synthesis. Approximately the hypothesis or the concept is given by Peter Michel and the total concept itself is called as Michel's chemi-osmotic hypothesis. That means photophosphorylation it happens itself is Michel's chemi-osmotic hypothesis, but photophosphorylation terminology was being given by uh, Daniel Arnon that actually photophosphorylation it is nothing but the concept of Michel's chemi-osmotic hypothesis, a purely chemi-osmotic hypothesis that is being given by Peter Michel, right? I hope you got it, right? Now, where this happens here? This chemi uh, osmotic hypothesis explains about the process of ATP synthesis. Now, if you look at ATP synthesis, where it happens here, now wherever you take that chemi osmotic hypothesis that explains about 
explains about synthesis of ATP from protons synthesis of ATP from protons in mitochondria better you write first chloroplast chloroplast and in mitochondria ok so where this is applicable this Michel's chemiosmotic hypo hypothesis explains about what it explains synthesis of ATP actually synthesis of ATP how it takes place using protons from the protons where it occurs in chloroplast and in mitochondria okay so why we are taking two because phosphoryl ATP synthesis occurs in two important cell organelles very very important occurs in two important cell organelles which are those important cell organelles so this process synthesis of ATP occurs in two cell organelles one is nothing but chloroplast other one is nothing but mitochondria what happens in these two cell organelles in chloroplast what occurs you all know very well that is photosynthesis we all know it very well and in mitochondria what occurs is nothing but respiration what occurs here it is nothing but what respiration so synthesis of ATP occurs in chloroplast in the process called photosynthesis that we are going to discuss now in photosynthesis later also we are going to discuss about a synthesis of ATP in mitochondria that happens in respiration remember in chloroplast and mitochondria ATP synthesis what we speak itself is nothing but called Michel's chemiosmotic hypothesis so guys I'll just quickly revise photophosphorylation term was given by Daniel Arnold it's as, as usual this is nothing but based on Michel's chemiosmotic hypothesis remember this concept is given by Peter Michel this explains about how ATP synthesis takes place and uh, when you see it, uh, synthesis of ATP where energy synthesis happens in two important cell organelles how ATP is produced from protons which are the two cell organelles one is in chloroplast ATP synthesis takes place and even in mitochondria ATP synthesis takes place remember in chloroplast what occurs in photosynthesis there is a synthesis of ATP in mitochondria at the time of respiration also there is a synthesis of ATP both are explained by meter what you call peto Michel's chemiosmotic hypothesis.